Personally, I quite like the Jeep Wrangler. In fact, I would love to own a Jeep Wrangler pickup was fully electrified. And fortunately, Jeep do plan on making an electric Wrangler. Here is when it's coming out and here is what we know about it. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. It's great to see you. Hope you've had an awesome week. Hope you've had an amazing day. You know what? There are so many new electric cars coming out. It's hard to keep track of them all. It's insane. But when I saw the news that the Jeep Wrangler would be electrified, I was, well, skeptical. Because Jeep isn't doing much when it comes to electrifying cars, are they? Not much has been happening, to be honest. Let's be frank, let's be fair. And then I saw the Dodge. Dodge Charger. Muscle car. Electric. Electric muscle car. Who would have thought? One of the prettiest, most beautiful cars ever made in the history of the automobile. Then the following day, I see that Jeep are going to make an electric Wrangler, and you know what? All is good in the world. Jeep recently showed off its new EV prototypes based on the Jeep Wrangler, and they're called Magneto and Magneto 2.0. Now, they're called prototypes, but frankly, they are just basically Jeep showing you what their new electrified Wrangler will look like. And it looks like a Wrangler. Yeah, pretty much the same as what they look like now. According to Motor Trend, Jeep displayed its Wrangler EV prototypes at its launch event. The vehicles were named Magneto and built off existing gas-powered Jeep Wrangler architecture, employing basically the same bodywork interior and even 4x4 systems. The brand plans a 2024 release date for the production version. So they'll be here. What's that? A year and a half. And you should be able to order a Jeep Wrangler electric pickup truck based off the internal combustion engine version, which is a pretty significant issue in my view. What does it mean? Compromised car. It's going to have a transmission tunnel most likely, but with no transmission in the car. You know, it's quite a few compromises you have to make when you turn an internal combustion engine vehicle into an electric version. I still think it's going to be pretty good though. Now, the two vehicles shown off showed impressive and very, very, very nice specifications. First of all, the Magneto based on the two-door Jeep Wrangler, not the version that I want. But anyway, the vehicle featured a manual transmission and two-speed transfer case. I'm not even sure how they made that work, but apparently it does work. Both taken off the gas-powered variant of the Jeep Wrangler. The 4x4 system was then hooked up to a single motor in the engine bay, which produces 285 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque. A 70 kilowatt hour battery, a lithium ternary battery, not an LFP battery, is then connected to the motor as well. The Magneto 2.0 offered a significant upgrade versus the standard Magneto. The 2.0 had a similar two-door Jeep Wrangler body, but Jeep upgraded the vehicle with an 800-volt architecture, so state-of-the-art architecture and a much more powerful motor. The second iteration of the Jeep Wrangler Magneto has 625 horsepower and 850 pound-feet of torque. Yeah, that's a pretty good reason to upgrade for those of you guys who just love power and torque, right? Go from the internal combustion engine version to the electric version. You're going to get a lot more horsepower. You're going to look at a lot more torque and it's going to be way better for four-wheel driving. I mean, look at the Rivian. It's an amazing pickup truck for four-wheel driving. That's what the reviews say. All of them say the same thing. I think the Wrangler is going to be much, much better off-roading with its new electric chassis, its new electric powertrain. It's going to get it that instant torque that you need to give you that improved four-wheel drive handling. Now, Jeep is staying true to its roots with Magneto prototypes, but their dedication to Jeep's heritage technology will pose challenges to them in the future. Let's be fair, compromised cars don't always sell that well. For example, some of the Mercedes-Benz models, BMW models, they've been ignored in China and in other countries because they're based off internal combustion engine vehicles. In addition, using a manual transmission and transfer case means the vehicle will be heavier and must work the motor harder to overcome inefficiencies by going through the system. Really having a manual transmission, it's really not a positive in any way. It's just sort of a, a thing that Jeep are obviously doing to appease people who want a manual transmission. Now, I don't believe when this car actually becomes is produced in 2024 that most people will get the version with a manual transmission, I think that if Jeep do offer this, which they probably will, more than likely nine out of 10 customers will be smart enough to order the version that doesn't have a transmission because why? Well, as Elon Musk says, the best part is no part. The traditional four x four system 
also means the vehicle is far more complex and contains far more failure points than a direct drive alternative, says Tesla And I have to agree. It's really kind of weird that they've used their traditional 4x4 system. I'm going to guess they're going to do something like similar to what Rivian's done when this vehicle is released in 2024. More than likely, it won't have this old school 4x4 system. Hopefully, it doesn't anyway. Jeep didn't comment on the possible advantages of their system because there aren't really any. And it's certainly true that they would not be the only manufacturer introducing traditional transmission technology to EVs. For example, the Porsche Taycan has a two-speed gearbox. However, Jeep's approach is unique in the industry. There's no other manufacturers currently offering manual transmissions, and I'm talking mainstream manufacturers here, there's none that are offering manual transmissions on EVs. The second issue Jeep is going to have is more to do with design language. Due to Jeep's lackluster aerodynamics, the vehicle will work far harder to get through the air, meaning its range will be drastically affected by its brick-like shape. Brick-like shape looks kind of cool. It's old school. I like it personally, but it's an aerodynamic brick. So range is going to be not that good. It's going to be a bit of a drawback to this car. Another thing that's going to affect range is those big, grippy, knobby tires. Range will be drastically affected by that. Now, obviously, the range of the internal combustion engine version is drastically affected by these things as well. By the fact that it's shaped like a brick, by the fact that it's got massive knobbly tires. Yeah, that does mean you use a hell of a lot more gas. So there's compromises for either choice here. Both types of combustion are affected, or non-combustion, I should say. Doing some basic napkin math, according to Tesla Rati, with a 70 kilowatt hour battery, the vehicle must overcome so many inefficiencies from the transmission, from the four-wheel drive system, from the tires, from the brick-like shape, that it would be surprising to see it achieve more than two miles per kilowatt, giving the prototype a hypothetical range of only 140 miles. But if it only achieves around two miles per kilowatt, then it's going to achieve a similar kind of efficiency to the Tesla Semi, which is about what, 20 times bigger? I'm not so sure about those calculations, but whatever the case may be, efficiency will be pretty poor. However, the Magneto 2.0 with its 800 volt system might have better efficiency than we think. And the other thing to consider is the fact that because this car isn't coming out until 2024, the energy density of the batteries might also be better than what we're seeing in current Stellantis group vehicles right now. The other thing that could happen is maybe Jeep will fit a bigger battery pack. If they fit a bigger battery pack than a 70 kilowatt hour pack, if they put something like a 100 kilowatt hour pack, then range could be drastically increased on the vehicle. Plus, if the energy density of the batteries was improved by say 20%, which is more than likely to happen within the next year and a half, then we're gonna see much greater ranges than what we think would happen if the vehicle were to come out say tomorrow. It has always been true that Jeep buyers are buying more than a vehicle. They're buying into an idea, a lifestyle, a passion, a feeling, an emotion. Sort of like a cult really, isn't it? A lot of people who buy these kinds of cars, they'll get one every few years. They'll get a new version. It's not really any different to the old version, but they'll get it anyway, because they love the brand. And I understand. However, if this vehicle is compromised in the ways that Jeep has shown it to be so far, those buyers will have a hard choice to make. Stick with the brand, stick with all these compromises, or buy a new, more modern type vehicle. I'm intrigued to see what's gonna happen. Now, some people are saying, that these vehicles are just showpieces. They're not made to be sold or driven or mass marketed. And I'm sorry, people, you're wrong. <laughs> if you really think Jeep is not planning to sell the Wrangler, its most popular car worldwide, then you've got rocks in your head. There's absolutely no doubt about it that Jeep plans on making these Jeep Wrangler electric cars because why wouldn't they? It's their most iconic nameplate. As if they wouldn't, they'd have to be mental not to. Take it from me. I haven't yet been wrong on this when I predict this kind of thing. Jeep will in fact make these cars and these are what they will be making. Now, the only question is not whether or not they'll make them, but whether or not they will actually make them with a manual transmission. I think that's pretty unlikely. And whether or not they'll make them with their old school four wheel drive technology, which is not needed in a new electric car. Now, I think probably not. More than likely, they'll use new technology where the electric motors can control torque factoring themselves. You don't need all these diff locks and transfers and all these kinds of things. They're all pretty old school. In the new world of four-wheel driving, things are very, very different. It's an exciting world to be a part of, and I love it. Thank you for watching, and let me know in the comments section below, will you consider buying an electric Jeep Wrangler, even if it looks like a brick?